and this is also a, uh, it was kind of the, the first time that I tried to document my, my travels. Back then, you guys all have to realize, I didn't see my first iPhone. The iPhone 1 didn't come out until the beginning of my junior year of college. So there was no way to record video. YouTube wasn't a thing. There was, the only way that I could share my travels, which is what I wanted to do, was to write it down. So I wrote down, I think it was a 60 page document. I took a bunch of pictures with me and my dog, and then I gave it to friends and family. So I always wanted to share my travels. And then the slide you saw here, this is me as a bartender in Denver, Colorado. So after that trip, I basically just started traveling around. Um, during this time, I slept on my friend's kitchen on a blow-up mattress for about six months. And I was literally, any, any way I could find to travel cheaply and explore, that's what I'd do. So I still had the van, and what I would do is I would work, you know, Thursday through Sunday at the bar, and then I'd take the van out to the mountains in Colorado. And that's what I did in many different cities. That's just the way that I did it. But I had no creative outlet. I didn't, I wasn't creating, I wasn't recording my journeys. It was just like party time, you know, just getting out there, seeing, seeing what's out there, meeting people and still traveling, you know, a little bit, but I really wasn't uh, documenting it at all. So that's why I call it the dark ages. It's just black. I didn't do anything productive. This is when YouTube came along. So I sold that van. I bought a class B motorhome, which is basically a van that had a shower, sink, toilet, bed, stove, it had everything you needed to live. Uh, and then I started from Indiana and I was going to go to Southern California and then go up to Alaska because I always wanted to go to Alaska. I have no idea why. At first it was kind of the fishing, but other than that, I knew there was a lot of good fishing up there. That's about it. That's the only thing I really knew about Alaska, but it was somewhere I wanted to go and I was going to take this van there. Uh, with these vans, there's uh, some mechanical problems you have to take care of, and I found that out the hard way while on the road. So I just kept throwing money at this thing. I maxed out my credit card. By the time I got it figured out, my credit card was maxed out in Arizona, and that's where Miss G comes in. Um, I have experience working at the bar, obviously, so they were hiring at the time, and I, uh, I got a job. I was going to be there for two or three weeks, just enough to get to Southern California and then go, go north. And uh, I was living out of the van in a parking lot next to the bar, actually, next to ASU. And then it was just uh, kind of small things kept happening. Um, one time the bar back got, got sick uh, and the managers knew I had experience. So they threw me in there during St. Patrick's Day and I made $620 in one shift. And then they're like, hey, do you want to still bar back? I was like, well, I do have about $7,000 worth of credit card debt. Maybe I'll stick around a little bit longer. And that lasted for about nine months. I stayed in Arizona longer than I've ever stayed in one place my entire life. And then YouTube started because I finally got an iPhone. I got a 3G. So that's one of the old school iPhones. You can see the great quality there that we had with, with that iPhone. But it was the first time that I had a way to show my travels. I had a video outlet, a way to record it. And it was very exciting for me. This is before YouTube is what it is today. There was no monetization. You had to have 600 subscribers to have a monetized account. And there was no way I was ever getting 600 subscribers ever. So it wasn't even anything about the monetization. I just wanted to find a, a way to share my travels. And I finally, finally found one. So after Arizona, the, the tone of the channel, how the channel went, it wasn't just about me. Uh, you know, just telling people, hey, you can live in a van, you can do this, you can travel if you want to. Like, it's really up to you. You have to make it happen. It went from that to telling a story about a, a couple that's traveling together in, in a vehicle, that's going out and doing different things. So the story went from Chris Travels to Chris and G Travels. And that was a big transformation. That's when the channel started growing more because I would literally just kind of show some small stuff, maybe some fishing. And then it went from actually having a personal approach to it, like actually showing our struggles, showing what it's like trying to travel and trying to live full time. And it started gaining momentum. And it was a very interesting time. So this is out of the Class B motorhome in Alaska. Um, this is on the way back to, to Anchorage. So we would have this camper van, we'd work, you know, five or six days a week, then we'd go travel one, one day at a time. And this is when marketing came into play. So this is uh, Denali or Mount McKinley, whatever you want to call it here. Uh, I work for Holland American Princess in Alaska, and they have what, what they call excursions. And people that are doing cruises up there, they can fly around McKinley, they can do whitewater rafting, they can you know, go horseback riding in the woods, they can do whatever they want to do. But since I worked for Holland American Princess, I got a discount. I got space available, friends and family got 75% off. I had a decent uh, Nikon camera. I told the guy at the front desk who I found out who was in charge 
Um, I was like, man, I'd really like to shoot this video and put it on my YouTube channel, but we can't afford to get my, my grandma or my girlfriend on. Uh, so I guess we'll, we'll just catch you later. I mean, I said it in other ways, but that was the gist of the conversation. And he started asking about the channel. I saw a little bit of a change in his, in his uh, eyes and his tone towards me. And I was like, yeah, so we have this channel. It's about uh, traveling in Alaska. Uh, we show what people can do when they're up here. And long story short, everybody got on the flight for free. And this is a photo from that flight. And that was the first time where I started to see the channel had some marketing value. We were able to get some pretty cool things or be able to do some pretty cool things just by shooting video that I wanted to do. I wanted to shoot video of Denali because it's, it's an amazing thing. Like that is a very beautiful mountain. And we had like, it was a, a single engine, you know, five passenger plane, this little plane, you're flying around the, uh, the largest mountain in the Northern hemisphere and got to do it for free just by shooting a video that I wanted to do. You know, is is a real awakening for me. Uh, it's such a great platform, and the reason for that is is because everything comes from me. On on TV, you never you don't really have a connection with the people that you're watching on TV. But when people comment to me, I always try and comment back as much as possible. When they email me, I try and email back. When they have questions, you know, it's just more of a, a personal relationship. And the thing is, I enjoy it. I really do. I love getting pictures. We got a picture the other day of of a young lady who bought her first RV. And she tagged us on Facebook saying, With, without your videos, I wouldn't have bought this RV. So those are the things that we absolutely love. Like there's people out there, like I really think there's a movement out there. People starting to realize they don't have to, you know, have all these possessions. They can really go out there and enjoy life and do what they want to do. And we're seeing that on, on YouTube. And we use YouTube for promotions. When we do the Woo Box, I make a quick video. Hey, we're doing this, this giveaway today. We're doing a hardwired 50... 50 amp unit. Be sure to sign up. Good luck, everybody. And that brings you down to RVing Tech. Uh, that is the website that we sell the, the gear on. Uh, and we're still expanding. Anytime I find a company that I believe in, that you know they have great reviews, great customer service, and I try and get companies made in America, like their products are made in America or based out of the US. Um, pretty much everything I sell on the site right now, I believe, is all based out every actual physical um, piece of equipment based out of the US. So I'm just very picky when it comes to it because uh, you know, I'm representing these companies through my Facebook, so you have to be very careful with that. And the reason why I don't do YouTube full time, and this is kind of like the underbelly of, of YouTube, is there is a, uh, a lot of negativity with, with certain people like commenters on, on YouTube. It doesn't sound like a big, a, a big deal. But like I said earlier, like me growing up, positivity is something that I absolutely thrive on. Negativity drives me absolutely nuts. I cannot stand negativity. I like literally one of my sayings is it could always be worse. Like Gino's when something's going on in the RV, we're stuck in the middle of nowhere. We, we can't get out of there. I'm like, it could always be worse because the fact of the matter is it could always be worse. But with YouTube, they, they do it on purpose and it's because of money. So what they do is when people get in little arguments on the, the comments section of YouTube, YouTube's making money. Because what happens is you get an email saying somebody replied to you that you're spatting back and forth with. You go back, like you press that link, it goes back to the video. The video plays again. That ad plays again. So the creator's making money and YouTube's making money again. I'm pretty sure I know a couple creators that actually they make separate accounts because on YouTube you can have separate accounts. You can make different screen names on one account they go to their comment section and rile it up. So they, they start commenting back and forth with people and like saying, oh, you don't know what you're talking about or this guy did this. You know, they just kind of create the drama in the, in the comment section, makes them more money, and then they get more comments on their channel. You know, so that's the one thing with YouTube right now that I absolutely, like that's the main reason why I don't want to go full time with YouTube because I don't want to be part of something that is doing that. And that's a slippery slope from there because if they're willing to make more money off their creators, like being stressed out about something or not enjoying something. And that's something that uh, I don't want to be a part of. So that's something with, with YouTube that's a little bit off. And that's why I originally started doing uh, RVing tech or pushing more for RVing tech. As I said before, we can go from RV show to RV show and sell gear and then possibly do presentations on different gear and then get a different uh, revenue from that. It's always good to diversify, you know, have different buckets 
out there to catch all the little raindrops for, for revenue. Because we also do uh, affiliate websites on Amazon. So you can set up uh, affiliate websites. And I did one called tinyhome.guide. As I said before, uh, meeting Dr. Sweeten and ashan has been an absolute blessing to the channel. So the metaphor I used yesterday was my goals were right here and I was taking the path to go all the way around. I was really stubborn about things. And then after talking with, with Ashan and Dr. Sweeten, they really kind of guided me to where I needed to go to get to my goals. And uh, since working with them, the channel went from, uh, when I first met Dr. Sweeten, the channel went from 31.5 thousand subscribers to 48.5. And the, uh, the Facebook, that was the big one because I didn't want to play their games at first. It went from 700 um, likes on, on our page to uh, 5.2. I think it's 5.3 now. We're getting about 100, 120 likes per week on that now. Uh, Instagram has been growing. Uh, lovely Miss G will be in charge of the Instagram, Snapchat, Pinterest on the way up. We hope to provide content every single day on the way up to Alaska and while in Alaska. And then with, uh, with Twitter, once I started retweeting, once I started actually posting on Twitter, instead of just linking everything to Twitter, um, it's doubled in a very short amount of time. So like I said, before meeting Dr. Sweeten, I was adamantly opposed to Facebook. I had uh, no future plans for social media. Like I literally knew numbers were good, but I had no idea how to utilize them in the right way. So just working with, with Ashan, talking to him, like I talked to Ashan on the phone 15 times since August and emailed Dr. Sweeten back and forth. And that's the only communication we had and they helped me you know, get a lot of this done. Um, I had no positive creative influence. Like Ashan's a workhorse, very hard worker. And I had no idea how to promote business via social media. I had no, like I said before, I had no real way of using social media as a tool. I knew the numbers were good. I knew how to tag some stuff, but I, until working with Ashan here, um, I really didn't see the, the overall value of the, uh, of the social media platforms. But now I'm really starting to see it and it's, it's very, very powerful. So lessons learned, this is lessons that I've learned, not even working with Ashan and Dr. Sweeten. This is my own, you know, last two or three years working with the channel. Um, the lessons that I've learned just dealing with different companies and different businesses. Um, clients will be resistant to change. First time I talked to Ashan, one of the first times he told me that the website that I built myself on WordPress was gonna have to be changed. I have many hours and hours and hours of work on that website. And at first I was like, no man, I'm not doing that. And then I, we got off the phone and I called him back about 15 minutes later. And I was just like, okay, let's, let's do the new website. Because in my own dealings with different companies, say Progressive Industries, at first, you know, the people up top, they might be a little resistant to different things and you have to kind of show them, you know, different angles and how it works. So I was like, okay, he knows what he's talking about. Let's, uh, let's, let's do what you're talking about. And then a major majority of owners, they won't appreciate or understand social media. You're in a very interesting situation right now because what you're learning is a whole new genre that a majority of business owners right now do not understand. They built this business from way back in the day. They don't understand social media. They don't understand the importance of it. They don't understand how it works. But what they do understand is what they've been doing for the last 20 or 30 years has worked. But that is uh, the basic breakdown of, of what we've been doing. So with, with us, it's, it's just trying to find ways to, to do what we love, but at the same time, make some money. Like for me, the, the overall profit of things is not really that important at all. And I really honestly do that. Like money, I, I am one of those people that wish money wasn't a thing, you know, but what I, what I did was there was no job for me out there as like a digital entrepreneur when I first started this. I had no idea that YouTube was gonna take off. I had no idea that I'd be able to work with these companies. So I basically made my own you know, position out there just to make enough money to actually do what I love to do. And that's to travel, to meet new people and to see new things. Cause we get to do things that are, you know, just absolutely ridiculous. Like traveling in the RV, we were at a spot in uh, the Oregon coast where we parked right on the, right on the side of the ocean at an overlook. It was $10 a night to park there. And during sunset, we'd go up to the top of the RV, sit on the RV and drink beer and wine and watch the sunset. And it cost us, including our food for the day. We went to the coffee shop, got some internet. We spent $16 that day for everything. Now, if you guys take that situation and you are doing your digital marketing, you can literally do that anywhere. Like you are just, you are incredibly lucky to be in this situation right now at this current time when everything's opening up. Because I would absolutely kill to go back to my college days 
And instead of just finishing with the, with the major that I did, if I actually knew what I knew now, I'd go back and do what you're doing. I'd do some sort of graphic design, uh, digital marketing, because it really opens up your world to do anything you want to do. And it goes back to that, that old 20,000 days um, you know, saying, because once you get that reality that you don't have unlimited time in this world, and I think that's what a lot of people miss out on, and they find out too late once they're old and retired, they've been saving their entire lives to go out and travel or do what they want to do, and then their body can't keep up, or they, they weren't able to save, or some medical emergency happened, and they weren't able to do what they wanted to do. Like, we get that all the time on the channel. Like, the, the, the best comments are the ones where people say, you really motivated, here's the RV that we just got, thank you so much. We also get comments, hey, I, I couldn't travel uh, because I waited too long and something happened, but I, at least I get to travel vicariously through you. You know, so keep that in mind that tomorrow is never, ever, ever guaranteed. Thank you.